Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, Admin Evangelist at Salesforce, and this is How I Solve This. In today's episode, we see how Karen Pearson built an app in Salesforce to help her manage her work for onboarding and offboarding employees with custom objects, fields, email activities, and automation. Hi, Karen. Hi. So Karen, why don't you share a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you and a bit about your Salesforce journey? Sure. So I am a Salesforce administrator at Software AG. We're a large technology company um, actually based in Europe. And I manage the company's internal software for their sales department, along with a team of other people. It is not just me, thankfully. It is a really big org, and they have had Salesforce for quite a long time. So we do need a team to manage it. Uh, And I became an admin about four years ago now. And of course, accidentally, uh, it's one of my favorite things to be an accidental admin. Uh, Our current admin had left at my previous job and I was already doing a lot of technology management and user management from the Microsoft side. So it seemed natural that I would take over uh, Salesforce as well. I had also been a power user for a long time, so I was very familiar with it. But uh, I was not familiar with being an administrator. So I started my journey by going to a conference and I just fell in love. Fell in love with the community more than anything, as well as the product Uh, was so interesting, so dynamic, so much to learn. Um, and I really saw a future for myself in it. So that's my story. Now you mentioned the community. So tell us a little bit more about what the community means to you and how you're involved. So the community has been fantastic. If it wasn't for the community, I honestly don't think I would have been so excited about Salesforce. Um, They're the ones who lured me in. Uh, They're the ones who encouraged me, who told me that I could learn this, um, who told me not to be intimidated by other long-term Salesforce people, to be honest, like yourself, who I was, my mind was blown with your automation blog and all of the webinars that you've done. And I was like, I want to be like her. Um, (laughs) And they really encouraged me. I started going to uh, meetings in Chicago. We have an admin user group. We also have a women in technology group, as well as um, probably my favorite, which is our Salesforce Saturday in Chicago. Chicago. And I have missed them a lot this past year in person, but I've been trying to attend virtually. And to be honest, it's been kind of nice this past year since all of the user groups have been virtual. I've attended some in other cities that I wouldn't normally be able to. So that's been really fun too. So why don't you share with us the business problem that you're trying to solve for? Sure. So at my former uh, job, I Like I said, I manage technology and users, and there was a lot of things that I needed to keep track of when a new person would start or when an existing employee would leave. There was, I had a checklist of things that were kept on my computer. I also had to ask their manager and their assistant for different pieces of information, which often came to me via an email or even just a verbal response as they're walking past my desk. Um, So I had emails, paper notes, checklists, and it just became overwhelming, not to mention I had to remember to get certain things done by certain dates, uh, by the departure date or by the start date. So I was trying to find a better way to consolidate this, make it more transparent, make people accountable, and also make it searchable. And I thought, Salesforce app, why not? (laughs) All right, the moment we've been waiting for. Show us how you solve this. So here I built a brand new app. It's alongside our sales app, but it was separate from it. I started off by building two objects, new employees and departing employees. And then I built the whole console app uh, to house it. And as you can see, I also have in here the people objects, reports, and the recycle bin. I was trying to determine what else I might need to access while I was within this app so that I didn't have to constantly um, get out of it and use the app launcher to find things. So I... um, 
So the fields were directly taken from my checklist. So here's an example of a record for a departing employee. And at the top, I customized the um, sort of quick reference section uh, for the things that I needed to know immediately. And then here in the details pane, this is pretty much what my checklist was. Name, manager, when should I delete their account? When are they leaving? Will they be continuing on? So a lot of times people stayed on for anywhere from like a day to even a couple of weeks to finish up on a client or to continue doing their work because we didn't have a replacement for them, uh, things like that. And those were things I needed to know because if somebody was leaving, I would just shut off their account the day they left. Uh, from a legal standpoint, that was necessary. So if they were staying on, that was definitely information I needed. And then I needed to know what they needed if they were staying on. Did they need Office 365? Did they need Salesforce? Those kinds of things. Down here, I have an IT only section. This is all read only for a regular user. And uh, even this password field is not visible. So I have some field security in here to keep the data clean or at least as clean as possible. So when I would fill out a record and I let's start out by filling out a record. So here's the editing version. Uh, the employee name as well as the manager and assistant are all lookup fields to the user object, which is fantastic. That way I'm not spelling anyone's name wrong. I'm not getting anyone's email address incorrect. Everything is directly from the user record. So let's say Cheshire Cat is leaving and I am their manager. They don't have an assistant because not everybody had an assistant. And let's say they're leaving on the 25th. So we'll delete their account two weeks after that. Will they be continuing on? So this has some dependencies. If I click yes, it's opening up these two fields in the subcontractor section. And if I check no, those are still hidden. And that's just an easier way for the user to know that uh, they need to fill these things out. So normally this is what I would fill out when I would find out that someone was leaving. Uh, usually that came through via an all staff email. And it would try, I would try and make this the first thing that I would do just so that a record is created. Because once I put in the date of departure and once I put in the date to delete the account, that triggered some automation on the back end, which I'll show you in a second. So down here under IT only, I generally did not know this information immediately and it would happen as the process went along. Um, usually I would only know their computer name. So let's just say it's Dell123. So you'll notice I said yes here, but I did not put in a subcontractor departure date. So this is a validation rule I do have on this record. Uh, you have to fill this out if you know they will be continuing on. Because once again, from a legal standpoint, um, this is something that really we need to know. So let's just say they'll stay to the end of the week. And they will need Office 365, but they will not need Salesforce. Boo-hoo. <laughs> So here we have the record. And one of the things I have to say I'm most excited about in this app is the activity pane. This is where everything can be kept in one place. I didn't have to worry about trying to find an email or trying to find that one thing that somebody told me as they were walking by my desk. All of it could be right here. So once I finished filling out a record as much as I could, the first thing I would do is email their manager um, or their assistant and find out uh, more information. So we are just going to email myself again. <laughs> and subject. So normally I would probably have a template that I've created. I don't have one for this dev org, but 
usually I had a template that asked for the same thing all the time. Please fill out this departing employee record. I would have to copy the link from this record. So I usually just right clicked and copied the link address. But as you can see, it's already associated to this. So I don't have to worry about it being um, on this activity and poof, there it is. And then once I would get a response from that uh, in Outlook, I would use the Outlook integration app and reassociate that reply with this record. And so there would be a whole list of uh, emails going back and forth, including to the departed employee, if um, when I send them a label, I would do that directly from here. And when I would not receive their computer, if it had been a few weeks and they had not gotten it back to me, I would um, again, email them directly from the record and then associate their reply. So uh, everything was in one place and it was really fantastic. And so over here, I have some examples of the email alerts that get sent out. Um, you'll see here, Mad Hatter did not return his computer on time. And this is sent out two weeks after the date of departure field indicates. And here we have the um, shipping label to Alice that needs to be sent so that she can send her computer back to me. This goes out about five days before their departure date. So they're both triggered by fields, uh, date fields on the record. So that was a great solution that you built to help manage your work. Thank you, Karen, for being a guest on How I Solved This. Sure, it was fun. You just saw how Karen was able to create an app to manage her work and keep onboarding and offboarding requests on track using custom objects, fields, emails, and automation with email alerts. Thanks, Karen. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you'll never miss another episode of How I Solve This. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome, admin.